guys, this is Karen Campbell and I'm back today with another kick-ass prompt by Jenny Mano from her Facebook group, Next Generation Art. She is the bomb diggity at these weekly um, drawing prompts and today we're doing this challenging profile and if you need help drawing profiles you can find that in my How to Draw More Fun Fab Faces book which is on Amazon which teaches you all about how to draw three quarter views and profiles. Um, just a little shameless plug there. I have recently discovered and was taught how to make really quick backgrounds doing spray painting and I am completely and utterly hooked and addicted. Um, you may have seen these in my last couple projects and I'm gonna also teach you how to do this in my new book that's coming out called Mixed Media Magic which is gonna be due out really soon. Um, but it is, as you know, probably if you know me at all, I say this like a million times, but I'm super impatient. I don't have a lot of time. I got three kids who are home, by the way, from school. So I have to like whip these projects out. I really don't have a lot of time. And these spray painted backgrounds are so fun and so fast and so easy. I think it took me three minutes to do this background. Not even kidding. Um, and thank you to Susan Miller. Um, <laughs> for teaching me this approach because it is a godsend and in addition to being a godsend it's also really 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 fun and cheap spray paints are really cheap and they're versatile and you can get them anywhere so highly recommend um, just make sure you're outside I have my garage door open there and it, it, I'm not kidding you three minutes you are done and it's just you have to be a little um, you know you gotta kind of go with a punch of spray paint is not for the for the um, it's not for the faint of heart, but if you don't have a lot of time and you want to whip out a snazzy background, can I just seriously recommend spray paint? That's all I'm going to say. Um, all right, I've never done this before, but again, I was feeling really crunched for time, so I just dove in head first today. I'm using my Magnum Sharpie, which always reminds me of a condom, but let's not talk about that right now. But that is literally what this is called. It's huge. And, um, you know, as long as your spray paint dries, and by the way, it dries in like four seconds, so again, amazing. Um, you can draw on it with whatever you want. So I'm using my Sharpie today because this, I already know just, I mean, this girl is edgy, she's punky, she's, she is not, <laughs> she's, she's not like a delicate flower, right? So what better instrument to go in on with than with my giant Sharpie? Um, I've never done this before, so I don't know that my gesso is going to actually cover up those mistakes, but I'm thinking it probably will. I hope so, because otherwise I'm a little bit screwed. But I didn't have time for second guessing myself. I just jumped in. And the reason I slowed this down here was just to show you that I know in quick time it looks, makes it look like I'm drawing really, really quickly. But kind of like a batter up at a baseball game, like who, you know, practices like swings a bunch of times before that ball actually comes at him. It, drawing with a big Sharpie like that is sort of the same way. And I sort of visualize before I put ink to canvas, like where that's going to go. And then I slowly, you know, apply it. So that's why I wanted to sh slow that down for you. Um, I do have my gesso out and I'm, at this point I don't really have a plan. Um, I know I need it on the inside of her face if before I'm gonna lay down her actual like skin color and I also knew that I needed to use it on the outside to like help re establish the outside boundary of where her face and profile were gonna be. So I ended up just using it in both places. Um, I also kind of tinkered around with the idea of using a black gesso, but then that's just so opaque that I knew I would never see that background again. So I went with a white and it was kind of like TBD whether I was gonna paint in addition to that on the outside of the, of the background or not. But um, so far, I mean, at least it was cool that the one coat of gesso did cover it up pretty well. Um, and then I put a, a layer of just skin tone um, craft paint over there and it, that that's all I use for paint for the skin tone so I, you know it actually did a really great job covering up all the sharpies so yay gesso to the rescue as usual as always so um, this is just my gelato again I don't have a lot of time so I need to be quick about getting my skin tone together today I do not have like three hours to be in my studio I had about an hour and that's about what this took. So um, if I'm in a hurry like that, I usually go to work pretty quick with either my gelatos or my pit pens. Lay 
layering with acrylic paints back and forth and back and forth and blending with a gesso takes up forever. And sometimes I'm in the mood for that and I love the challenge and I love, you know, like stretching my artistic muscles and and sometimes I just ain't got no time. So I am doing a quick and dirty today. And you know what? There's nothing wrong with that. If you don't have a lot of time, right? Every time you do a painting, no matter what style, no matter what products you're using, you're always honing your skill, right? So don't feel guilty if you only have an hour. Just bang out what you can do in an hour. And that's exactly what I'm doing today. So I had a layer of, let's see, acrylic, and then I had the gelatos, and I wasn't like loving how they were blending together because I also had that Stabilo, which is that's that water-soluble pencil, which is getting activated by my gesso, as you can see, is getting kind of dirty. So whenever that happens, like if things are going awry with my skin, I just whip out, like I do like a full layer of gesso over the whole thing, just to really lightly and dry blend it in. And then I can kind of start over because I'm not perfect. I'm not going to bang this out perfectly the first time. Um, so if you get into trouble, just know that you can smear like a light layer of gesso over the whole thing and that will help. I could not put down this Sharpie today. I just was felt very strongly that this edgy, bold look was imperative and I was having fun. And so even though it was like not the right move, I said, screw it, I'm doing it anyways. And I just started kind of doodling with it. Um, and again, it takes me a few attempts to get that profile line down. The best profiles are the most challenging perspective of a face to draw hands down. I mean, they're not like, oh, they're a little bit harder than three, three quarters. I'm talking they are really, really hard. So the best way to do that is, you know, buy books like mine that help you and break it down step by steps or, and also practice, practice like hell, right? So these prompts are great like that because you can um, hone your observation skills and get your, um, get your mind thinking about all those edges and the intersections and where things, you know, where like the eye segues into the nose and the lips and, and um, just practice, 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 practice. So this one was fantastic for that. So again, I'm just kind of restarting over with that whole idea I had with my, with my gelatos. The skin tone underneath was more even, less yucky. Um, and so now I felt like I could go back in with my gelatos again, kind of gelatos, take two, and see if I could do a better job. And I feel like it looks a little less crazy than it did before. Um, but again, I'm losing that like sharp, that sharp edgy edge from that Sharpie. So I am gonna keep putting that back in. It keeps getting painted over and then I keep putting it back in, damn it. <laughs> because I really, really like that look for just today. Not every painting for sure, but this one, absolutely. So I wanted her lips to kind of like correspond with her crazy background. So I'm using some of this fluorescent. I've been really into these fluorescents lately. Um, that was the my spray paints. Although I do have to say when the spray paints dry, they tend to lose their fluorescent edge a little bit, which does make me sad. I'm not gonna lie, because I do love me that fluorescent. Um, and they're great for edgy paintings like this one, with edgy subjects. Um, but you know, you do your best. So that ends up being, a, that's a Liquitex fluorescent pink that I end up using um, for her lips. So that's fine, that works. Again, using gesso in any places that need either highlights or way more blending. So that's what gesso is your best friend for, right? So you can make corrections with it, you can make highlights with it, and you can always improve on your blending with it too. So white gesso is your best friend. I have a whole chapter on gesso in my upcoming new book also, going over those exact principles. It's So you must always have some with you if you're doing any project, because if you get into trouble, that is going to be your way out. And speaking of gesso, there's some more now. <laughs> Again, I'm trying to knock back some of that. It's transparent, it's not fully opaque. So you need to get lots and lots of layers down if you want to cover anything, but it really, it will work. You know what I'm using right now, right? Of course you do. This is my matte Mod Podge that I, um, when I'm switching gears from painting to drawing, then I usually put down that Mod Podge because it creates a nice slick barrier and then I can draw and blend with pit pens and I also can paint on this too which I do as well but I have like a lot of colors of pit pens and I love to use them to add additional shadings um, on my mixed media projects because um, well a couple of reasons one is it's fun <laughs> that's pretty much always my like go-to reason for everything while I started it's just fun like I just feel like my purpose in life is to like 
tell people how to have more fun with their art supplies. And like, it, this is fun, right? What I, and the reason also it's fun is because you can erase them. So if I have, I have wipes right next to me and if you don't like any of this pen, you can just wipe it off. So I think that is really, really cool. Um, in a little bit, I'm gonna be going, I'm gonna get drawing her earrings and whatnot. And I actually forgot, I was so absorbed in what I was doing. I forgot to, um, I forgot to have my camera running. I actually did that whole, she has like a piece that runs from her nose to her ear. And I did that entire chain. And I didn't like it because it was, didn't look like it was naturally falling, like gravity wasn't pulling it in the right directions, if you know what I mean. It looked really wonky and was very distracting. So I ended up just taking a wipe and I did have to scrub a little bit, but I was able to wipe all of it off and like completely erase all the work that I had done. Now, if that's not awesome, then I do not know what is, right? Because how often in a painting do you get to like do a whole take two? And yeah, gesso can erase and help save the world, but like sometimes when you need to get rid of something like that and just exactly erase it, being having the power to do so is magical. So. Um, that's another reason I love that Mod Podge layer is, is it, it puts a barrier between all of your first painted layers and all of your subsequent marker layers when you're working with the pit pens. Um, so that is such another reason that that Mod Podge layer for me is so important. Yes, you can use other project products besides Mod Podge to do that. So any like semi-glossy gel medium is would work fine. I just happen to buy Mod Podge by the gallon. I have like boats of it and I love it. So I just use that, but you do not have to use that. Um, and so, yeah, that's why for me that layer is kind of a, a most important and you see me doing it all, all, all the time. Um, Jenny Mano, hello girl. Um, <laughs> sorry, but I just love her so much. Her prompts are so fun. Um, she has some very like intricate shading on the neck area, which I was, I was trying to kind of capture some of. I, I do confess, I get a little lazy and sometimes my eye, I think naturally like generalizes a lot sometimes of these nuances so I have to really force myself to go back and like stare at things and say okay now what is happening with the neck how does it go from dark to light and what can I do to make that same effect sometimes I'm super successful at it sometimes I'm not again I'm putting another layer down because anytime I feel confident in what I have already got down and then I want to go beyond that it's nice to have another layer it seals up everything underneath keeps everything from moving that I don't want to move and then I can continue working on top knowing that I can erase if I want to and everything that it's kind of good can stay now I gotta tell you I was really nervous about all these little intricate details because I am NOT a detail person and I also was like felt like her face was done so I didn't want to like quote unquote mess her up by having all these crazy details right so uh, this is after I've already drawn in and erased the chain from her nose and her ear so I was just not it was too distracting for me because it wasn't you know the graphite is one look and the mixed media is a completely different look so I thought well it would be cool maybe she's like a paper clip dangling you know from from her ear and that would be edgy and cool too and then it would kind of make up for the fact that she doesn't have that chain which is so super badass but um my drawing skills unfortunately were not as badass enough to make it worthwhile or look good on her face so this was my alternative plan it's fine i had to use like a like i was trying to use like metallic markers that were opaque to draw these and then kind of outline them it's hard to make them pop out because there's so much going on and there's so many layers underneath on my canvas as well. This is a giant Montana um, paint marker, which is like, which is like the paint equivalent of my gigantic Sharpie that I was using. I have only have about four of those, black, white, I have like a pink and a turquoise. Um, and there's my white one, but it is the kind of the same effect. You can get really bold, like graffiti type marks. And um, th those are fantastic products to get into. And so I'm almost done. I really just need to do like a little bit more highlighting. Always the last step is gra grabbing my Sharpie and just taking a minute to um, think about where the light is reflecting onto my face or canvas and trying to think out loud kind of what is what would the light be picking up on her face right the edge of her cheekbones if she has super sculpted cheeks like that would pick up the light right the her eyelids um along the curved part of her nose and chin 
Um, and then I actually go back later, you can see it in the final, I went and added one more line up in where her, on the top of her head to kind of um, tie in the same highlight that's on the side of her nose. But those really dramatic white highlights that I make with my white paint pan are just really punchy and satisfying for me. Sometimes you can go overboard like this. I added too many highlights in small on her eyebrow. So I just dried it with my hair dryer. I went back over that in black with my pit pen and then poof, they were all gone. So don't feel like anytime you're painting or drawing that anything is set in stone and permanent. You always have the flexibility and freedom to play if you just can learn about what your art supplies can do a little bit. And that will give you the confidence to go ahead and fix any mistakes that you think you've made. But overall, I love her. I had such a good time. Jenny has these prompts every single week in her Facebook group. Again, it's called Next Generation Art with a J. And I would suggest you go check her out if, she, if you haven't already. I do these, I'm trying to do them more and more because they're just so fun. Um, but keep an eye out for my new book called Mixed Media Magic coming out soon. Um, and thank you so much for watching and for being here and I hope you had a quarter of as much fun as watching as I had creating and I hope to see you the next time in the next video. Thanks so much you guys. Bye!